Anyway, do you know that in the world, over one billion people live in darkness? So what that means is to heat their homes, to cook their food so they, don't, so they have light at night, they have to burn what they can get access to. For a broad number of communities, that's kerosene. And kerosene, when it burns, it has that really thick, acrid smoke that impregnates your clothes, gets stuck in your lungs. And alarmingly, those that suffer the most are the kids. So there are tens of thousands of kids that suffer asthma and other health problems through inhalation of the smoke, but also ingestion, so they, they drink this up because they're, they're small, um, and burns. But some enterprising students, I emphasize the word students, came up with this gravity-operated lighting system. And this is the first prototype here. So very relatively simple. It has a weight, and the weight uh, creates the light. So there's no, there's no emissions, no carbon emissions. There's no ongoing costs. It's, it's five times brighter than the kerosene lamp. Health problems decreased, and as a, one of the surprising consequences was that their literacy, health problems decreased, literacy increased, because the kids could then do their homework at night. So the point about this is that you guys too can make a difference. And you can do that through the Sugar Barrel Cup, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. In the meantime, I'd like to welcome our senior manager of the Michael Crouch Innovation Center, a super mum, innovation guru, and also a champion ocean paddler. Fee Chout. Thank you very much, Stephen. So, it's so good to see so many people here tonight. Welcome to the Michael Crouch Innovation Centre and the Peter Farrell Cup. We are so grateful to those that have come before us and who have nurtured and protected our country for future generations. In welcoming you, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land, sea, skies, Australia's first people. And we pay our respects to our elders past and present. So we are part of the UNSW Founders Program. So we exist to support you on your entrepreneurial journey in whatever direction it takes. Whilst you're a student here at UNSW, and then beyond as an alumni, you'll always be part of the UNSW Founders community. And our initiatives are open to you. I'd just like to give you a super quick, short overview of our programs. So you know that as part of Peter Farrell Cup and beyond Peter Farrell <coughs> Cup, you're supported every single step of the way. So you're here at MCIC Foundations. We also have a program Coach and Connect where we link you up with one-on-one -on -one startup business coaches. We also have a program called New Wave Founders. That's to address the gender gap in entrepreneurship by helping to launch more female-led startups. New Wave is also currently accepting applications and they close on Sunday. It's for a two-week program in the break. We have the Global Founders and we also have tech development support through Founders Lab and we also have prototype developing support through our own makerspace. We have a whole series of accelerator programs. We have Founders Start, Founders Launch, Founders Grow, and then we have our pinnacle program, Founders 10X. That's our flagship accelerator. It runs twice a year and it provides 20, 10 high potential startups with funding, $20,000, a Silicon Valley immersion trip and the opportunity down the line to also further funding. So I just really want to say, and I want to share something with you in closing, a quote from one of my favourite Canadian entrepreneurs, Vicky Saunders. She's the founder of SheEO. In her talk, It's Possible to Make Money and Do Good, she said, everything is broken. What a great time to be alive. If you're a creator, maker, entrepreneur, you're in Nirvana right now. In this room, I see so many creators, makers, innovators and entrepreneurs. I can't wait to learn about the problems that you would like to solve as part of the Peter Farrell Cup. I can't wait to hear about your ideas 
And I want to learn about all the new friendships and networks that you will make by taking part in the Peter Farrell Cup and being involved in the UNSW Founders Program. It's going to be great. Thank you. Thanks, Fee. So Fee's talking about what could be. And now we're going to talk about what has been and what has been possible. I'd like to introduce um, one of the high-performing entrepreneur in residence, Dr. William Crow. Now, William is the CEO of High Earth Orbit Robotics. He did his PhD, and then he took his PhD research through Founders 10X that Fee just spoke of. Now he's selling his secrets to the military. And he's now going to share those secrets with us. <laughs> Please welcome William Crow. Wow, um, so good to be here tonight. And for those in the front, you'll notice that I'm wearing my moon boots. Um, yeah, in those that, that were slow to, slow to uh, kind of filter in. Um, shame on you. Um, yeah, so I, I started my, my startup um, mainly because I, I won an internationally competitive prize um, funded by a guy um, who's a, a top executive at Blue Origin. Um, so very grateful for him. And there was an asteroid mining boom at the moment. So I had a concept for visiting way more asteroids than have ever been visited uh, in history. Um, and it's using a, a swarm concept called an orbital flow net. Um, but quickly, that, that asteroid mining boom disintegrated. Um, uh, but as, as uh, Stephen was just saying, uh, fortunately, that didn't matter so much. So we learned with this, the skills that we developed during the, the founders program about really finding um, our minimal viable product and finding our customer. And our, our customer's defense, who's uh, very excited about learning more about spacecraft like these. Um, these cost usually between um, 500 million and a billion US dollars. Um, the Australian government has two of these exact satellites um, in orbit owned by the MBN. Um, and really, it's, it's defense right now, and, and there's more commercial applications as we go. So really understanding more about these satellites, making sure they, they don't disrupt communications um, from orbit to us here on Earth. Um, so just talking a little bit about my journey, and, and hopefully this will um, be valuable for you guys as well. So where we started out um, four years ago now, I'm told, uh, Fee, Fee just let me know, uh, we went through the makerspace, and we really tested our ideas, prototyped them really rapidly. Uh, that was fantastic. Then we went through the Founder 10X program after I submitted my PhD. Um, if you are doing a PhD, don't try to do a business at the same time. Uh, not a great idea. <laughs> Tried that. Um, and then uh, we're, we're getting incubated now um, in the Founders in Residence program, uh, which is really fantastic. One thing I'd like to point out is that when we started, uh, we had two PhDs. So we have myself. Uh, we had Haranya here as well, who's the robotics um, guru. What we found is that we needed a, another type of uh, founder, founder as well. Uh, so we, we brought uh, Chris onto our team as well, who's uh, got an MBA and he's fantastic with numbers. So that's something that you should really try and um, collaborate and, and get together with other people tonight who might have other ideas to you. Thanks so much, guys. Thanks, William. I call him Astro Will. Um, for short. So William's been on the, has been on and is in the innovation journey, and you guys could be a William too. We'll give you the opportunity. You, just, you guys just have to supply the, the blood, sweat, and tears. So I'd like to mention a bit about you. So this is the profile of the registrations for today. So take a moment and look around you, and what do you see? What is around you is a whole room full of potential friends, each with distinct knowledge, skills, and experiences that you can benefit from through the PFC. And it's that diversity, that depth of diversity, that helps peak, spark our imagination and our creativity. There's quite a good gender mix. And the things that, well, at the moment, most of you got a, have at least got a preliminary idea, which is exactly what we're targeting. Um, some have some ideas that are a little bit more formed, and we can accommodate them all. So I thematically analyzed your responses to what attracts you to the PFC, and what it is is the learning aspect. Now, the PFC is UNSW's most prestigious student-led ideas competition, but it's more than a competition. It's an integrated learning program that will build your confidence 
build your 21st century skills, and thus your employability. Prize money ranked the lowest. So low, in fact, that we're thinking of perhaps not even offering it to you. <laughs> <laughs> and there was one person who wants to participate in the PSC to learn how to make waffles. So that's my N equals one. We have waffles here every other Wednesday, so you don't have to be in the PSC. Come along and we'll show you how to make them. This is the structure of the PSC. We're right here in the application stage. So the learning stage is essentially three workshops where we'll help you explore the problem space, tease out your idea, and then we'll help you communicate it persuasively and convincingly to different audiences. Not just a pitch audience, but a range of audiences. And then there's the pitch competitions. So through the application stage, 50 or moves through the program. So make sure your applications are done well. So in terms of your application, there's three key elements. You and your team. So you need a team of two and no more than five. The team, the applicant, so the team leader is the UNSW student. Now, if you don't have a team member or you'd like to join a team, then fill out our team matchup questionnaire and I'll send you this link later. The second part is the problem and the opportunity. So many people get stuck with, I don't understand the market, I don't understand how I'm going to make money, but don't let that be a barrier. Come and see us on the 21st of August. Book into a session, a one-on-one, -on -one, and we'll take you through it. Or indeed, if you have any questions about the program whatsoever, come here and see us. And lastly, the idea. So the idea has to be legal, um, <laughs> for good or bad. <laughs> And you can't be making money from it at the moment, so there can be no paying customers. Now, a lot of people say, well, I'm not creative, I don't have any ideas. Well, we've set up an, an ideation workshop for you, also on the 21st of August. Runs for an hour in the morning. Book into that through Eventbrite, and I'll send you the link for that as well. So that's enough from me. Let's hear it from those that have done it before. So Emma and Maggie are champions for the visually impaired, last year's PFC winners. And they're going to talk about their PFC experience. Welcome, Emma and Maggie. Yay. There are 300 million people in the world that are colorblind. They all struggle to navigate in a world that's simply not designed for them. Now, this is where XLight steps in. We aim to create a world that is inclusive and accessible to these people. I'm just going to introduce our background and our journey. So last year we were first and second years and we joined the Founders New Wave program where we learned most of our business skills from. This is where we gained our confidence and motivation to pursue our startup. After that we won the Peter Farrell Cup in 2018 and we pivoted from a physical product, which is a phone case and filter, to a di digital product, a software that, that helps people make design colorblind friendly documents. So you're all probably wondering why you should join the Peter Farrell Cup. I mean, you've all come to the info night probably trying to find that out. Um, and as you all know, there's the money and it looks pretty good on your CV, but it's not just that. You gain so many experiences and you learn so much throughout the program that can really benefit not only your startup if you have one and continue to develop it, but also other aspects of your life. Um, it's also an opportunity for you to learn more about yourself and what you're capable of. We went in not really expecting much to come out of it and ended up winning, and that was kind of the confidence boost that we needed to know that this is actually something that we can take further. It is actually something um, that we know now that um, it, there is a need for it and we actually have the skills to be able to pursue it. Um, then there's also things like creating connections with people who are just like you, um, building your teamwork skills. There's so many benefits to the Peter Farrell Cup that it's, it's really a, like a no-brainer. Like There's no reason not to join. Um, so tips from us. 
So like I said, just go for it. You're all here at the info night because you're interested in joining. Um, just sign up. You've got nothing to lose. Um, we'd also recommend if you get in, which I'm sure all, all of you will, um, to go to all of the workshops because they're really helpful in helping you um, both develop your starter but also knowing what um, they're looking for in the pitches and as part of the pitching competition. Um, we'd also recommend speaking to the mentors. Um, you get assigned a mentor, but if you can speak to the other mentors, because the more experience and the more um, opinions that you get, um, the better it's gonna, you can make your design. Um, and also speak to the judges, because they're also there to help you, and they can offer some really great advice. So I would like to share that winning Peter Farrell Cup was very unexpected to us. Um, before that, we did quite a few pitching competitions that we never placed before. But what really motivated us is our passion and drive. And so don't give up, guys. Um, you can, all can do it. Guys, what, working with Astro, Will, Maggie, and Emma, um, one thing that struck me is how lovely and accommodating and nice these, these guys are. So what it shows is that you don't have to be mean and nasty to, to be a success in the innovation space. Um, so we've heard it from an entrepreneur, we've heard it from winners from last year and participants, but what about the perspectives of a mentor? Well, we're fortunate to have Associate Professor Wallace Bridge um, from the Faculty of Science, who's been a mentor with the PFC since its inception for well over 18 years. Now, not only is, is he an academic teaching science-based innovation, he's also an entrepreneur in the medical space, so he, he's able to walk the talk. He's an invaluable asset to teams and also to the PFC. So please welcome Wallace. Hi. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, yeah, and welcome. This is us, a fantastic turnout, and uh, you really should consider going into the Peter Farrell Cup. You know, as you've probably heard through the theme here is uh, being an entrepreneur, it's about solving problems, it's making the world a better place. And uh, you've got, got to go and find that problem, that unmet need that you want to solve and uh, take all the way through. Maybe you won't do it this time, but if you have that mindset into the future, you will do it. Also, through your studies, you, um, you may go on and do a PhD over there. This uh, commercialisation, I have that. That's been my PhD student of uh, 20 years. And so, through working with me on that project, he, uh, he created his own career and his life. Um, <clears throat> so, you're going to come up with an idea. That's a simple thing at the moment. Actually, translating that into uh, a real solution for problems is very difficult and can go wrong at any stage. So it's uh, more great ideas fail than succeed. And that's because the, the way to commercialisation is not obvious. So you've got, you've got the idea, you've identified the problem you want to solve, but how are you going to do that? You're going to have to come up with some sort of product or service that you think that's going to fill that gap. But in that process, as you go through the, uh, the Peter Farrell Cup, you're going to have to do some competitive advantage. You know, do you have an advantage? You know, what are the current solutions for that? Why aren't they working? Why are you going to be better? That's going to inform your um, uh, value proposition, why people might want to invest in you. You need to understand your market, how many people suffer from it. So it's a massive story that you're going to have to be able to tell. It has to be compelling. And then you've got to engage all those stakeholders who are going to support you. So you've got to engage your customers, then you've got to go and get some money and all of that sort of thing. And so there's many ways you can fail and only a few ways you can see, succeed. So in this program, we address that by having mentors. So mentors have been through this many, many, many times before. So they can, you know, they can recognise or give you some advice on some of the traps that you might fall into. Um, <clears throat> so you should... Uh, because uh, if you go down those, you may, you've heard the term before, pivot. You know, you're going down a way and some, something, some risk manifests itself. You know, actually making a prototype isn't going to work. Maybe you need some IT and then you've got to restart. So uh, if you meet with your mentor, then they can give you some advice, as many as you can. That's always, expert advice is always good. Uh, when you do meet with them, uh, the, you should try, these are very busy people, they're very responsible uh, positions, uh, they, they're very time poor, but they've signed up for this, they want to be involved and they really love to give back and work with really motivated students, they love motivated students. And so the best way to interact with them is to try and schedule a routine meeting, preferably that meeting would be in, pay, in, in uh, face to face or Skype. I would not suggest that you try and get feedback from uh, emails. 
course, emails means they've got to write stuff, and that means it's going to take a lot of time, and you can't discuss all the issues. So, uh, yeah, and do it on a regular basis. So go in there well prepared. Uh, when they, they do give you some advice, try and implement into the next stage that you, you meet with them so that, you know, they acknowledge you've, you've listened to them. Yeah. Um, other than that, sign up, have a great time because it's a fantastic educational and practical experience that uh, you, know, you can take into your future careers. Even if you don't become an entrepreneur, you're going to be a manager, you're going to have to be working on someone's vision at some stage to turn it into reality. So congratulations again. Thank you very much, Wallace. You might have picked up that most of these talks are, are three minutes, and that's the three-minute pitch that we'll be doing at the end, so you, you guys will get practice in doing that as well. So we thought we'd set the night up so you would see the sort of way in which you would communicate a lot of information in a very short period of time. Now, with your idea, there are lots of ways of creating value. And I'd like to welcome to the stage our maker master, Gregory Davis, who's going to talk about maximizing or creating value across various domains and also to ensure that your solution doesn't become the next problem. Please welcome Gregory. Hi, thank you everyone. It's lovely, as everyone's been saying, to see so many people in the room. It's also wonderful to see so many familiar faces that perhaps I've seen come through the makerspace or just generally visiting, visiting us here at the MCIC. Um, I'd like to just start by thanking Excite. I'm not, where did they get to? As a colorblind person, uh, thank you very much for your, for your work there. The little optometry red dot things have haunted me my whole life, so thank you for uh, maybe walking, walking in my shoes as a colorblind person, so that is wonderful. Um, I'd like to talk to you tonight a little bit about sustainable development goals, okay? The world as we know it is full of problems, okay? Perhaps we've never been at a stage in the world where we've had so many problems, but with every problem come opportunities and possibilities. So I'm gonna talk just quickly, real quickly, about sustainable development goals. Um, up on the screen, hopefully some of you are familiar with this, the 17 uh, goals that the UN has set out. Um, there's just a few here I would like to particularly um, mention. I'm not going to talk about all 17. I've only got three minutes in the theme of tonight. Um, number one, no poverty. Will your startup, will your idea contribute to reduce people living under the poverty line? Gender equality, number five. Does your startup empower women, but also the LGBTQI community? What was the next one? Uh, reduced inequalities, number 10. Does your startup reduce these inequalities that are, that are plaguing the world at the moment, be they socioeconomic or health? What can your solution give? Responsible consumption. Many of the problems we have today, like plastic waste, you know, single-use plastics were based on yesterday's economy of convenience. So, you know, does your, does your, your model um, address these issues in advance? Number 13, climate action is always obviously a big one, is a massive, massive problem for the world. Perhaps the biggest problem the world has ever faced is, is climate action, you know. Will your intervention, you know, help make the world a better place when focused on climate action? There is a lot of money to be made in this sphere, so, you know, um, consider that. Um, and the final one, just quickly here, I wanted to talk about was peace, justice, and strong institutions. Will your startup help promote and facilitate peace, justice, in strong institutions? Okay, so there's just a few of my favourite ones out of those 17. Um, what is very important trend that we are seeing in um, people investing in startups are what we call the ESG factors, um, environmental, social and governance. You can see the environmental ones, I've spoken about some of these, climate change, biodiversity, natural resource, carbon emission, air and water pollution, you know, can you are you going to be in the position to be able to defend your idea when maybe a venture capitalist comes in and wants to invest? Are they going to be able to say, you know, is your startup future-proof? That's what they are looking for. If you can adhere to these ESG goals, you are basically future-proofing your company. When we look at social, the, the health and safety of your workers, you know, where are your workers 
coming from? Are you sourcing your labour from uh, low socioeconomic countries and exploiting the system there? Or are you investing in these people, helping them out? Um, product liability, uh, privacy and data security, you know, these are all social impacts that, you know, investors are looking at these days. And government, gov sorry, governance is extremely important. You know, do you have inclusion in diversity in your team? Are you a bunch of homogenous people from one region or do you celebrate that diversity? Is there transparency in your company from your supply chain all the way through? Board independence, ownership, ethics and executive compensations. You know, a lot of companies are measured by the disparity between their CEO and their workers. So these are all factors, these are emerging trends that I would invite you all to investigate as you look at the way your, your startup is going to be launched and the future of your, your business. That's a really quick nutshell of everything. Um, again, congratulations on making it this far. Um, hopefully, you know, I look, really look forward to being involved in, in my first Peter Farrell Cup and um, I'm looking forward to the next session coming up soon. I think we're going to get a little bit active. So um, enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you. Thanks, Gregory. We've got Gregory up here. He's our green champion. But also, this is the time to think about maximising value creation in your idea. So you may not think that it sounds in money straight away. So if you have a, a supply chain that sources from uh, sustainable suppliers, um, it might cost a bit more money, but it may sound in, in returns later on because certain organisations only deal with those that align with their own values. So when developing your idea, and we'll talk about this through the PFCs, you look at your value sets, you look at ways you can maximise value, and these are nice little frameworks and we'll give you others to think about. It. Our last session before dinner um, is our little mini workshop session. And with workshops, we like to mingle. Sometimes it's a little bit uncomfortable. We're dealing with people we don't know or we're doing something unfamiliar. And that's all part of pushing ourselves outside of our comfort zone, doing something new and learning. So I'm going to welcome Tash Jamison to the stage. She's the manager of Global Founders. But like all the founders, multi-talented. And Tash is also a fitness instructor. So she's going yes, to... Yes, indeed. <laughs> so I'd like... Can I call down the Michael Crouch team and the, any founders, broader founders staff down? Because we've got some materials to hand out that's going to help us in our workshop. In our workshop, we're going to look at just familiarising you with some of the language around innovation and the questions that you'll be looking at in the application process. So um, over to you, Tash. All right, good evening, guys. Again, thank you so much, Stephen, for that nice introduction. For those of you who normally deal with me, usually we're talking about global marketing expansion and how to deal with IP in foreign countries and things like that. But tonight, you know, we're going to get a little bit more into the idea around the language you use when we're talking about entrepreneurship. So for many of you, this might be new. There's going to be a lot of jargon, but we're going to do a little activity. However, just before we start tonight, I was having a chat with will about when you are a founder often you need to sacrifice certain things you give up you know going out for dinner with your friends you give up sleep you know and one thing that often gets neglected is exercise so before you start your journey as founders let's just relish in this last moment to get a little active we're gonna just do a little warm-up on everyone right find a little bit of space guys find a little bit of space move out move out come on i only need you only need a tiny bit Grab Just start ones. really easy, gang. Roll your shoulders back. Right start with me, start with me. Come on, gang. Roll yourself, them back. No worries. Just follow. After. Roll the shoulders. <laughs> Bring them back. That's it. Take it forward. Bring it forward. Three, two, one. Roll up. Get to the side. We're going to rotate the hips. Rotate your hips well. Let's have some fun. In the center. Uh. To the left, to the left now. To the, to the, the right, right, to the right. Yeah, yeah. Now take your Three, left hand and two, put it on your it side. Go and roll two, your shoulders. Bust it down. Do the slip. Bust it down. Side. Bring it here. Yeah, that's it. Three, part, uh, two, other side. Time. Take it over. Go and do the left leg like goes back. Yeah, Bring it down. Grab a sweetheart and spin. Out of here. Do the hold down and 
Nice guys, last one. Just take it over. Take it to the left now and dip with it. Don't throw down. Take a sip. Next side. Lean back. Put your hip. Sit it. It's simple. You can do it. All right, founders team, can you get some of these papers out to this kind of audience? Everyone, you're going to get a piece of paper right now. Keep in your groups. Keep around here. Hand them out. Hand them out. All right, everyone, you're going to get a little piece of paper. I want you to, very quickly. All right, let me stand up here. Gang, who knows what this is? Who's used one of these before? Right now. I just need you to get real loose. Get comfortable. Grab your loved ones. Or grab your love partner. And if you're by yourself, no worries. Just follow after me. Yeah. Gonna do the two-step and cowboy boogie. Grab a sweetheart and 